Um, moving on, we have here the so-called patrol strategies. So number one there is the so-called directed patrol. So what is all about this? So it says here a strategy in which patrol officers are involved in designing and implementing the patrol activities. Okay, so take note of this one. Okay, patrol officers are involved in designing and implementing patrol activities on the basis of analysis on specific community problems. So directed patrol, it is or it is a strategy which is focused mainly on the community problems. Okay, so uh, they deal, okay, directed or directly on the community problems. So yun yung main focus nila. While, I mean, uh, why they are going to conduct patrol. Okay, so that is for directed patrol. So just take note of it. They are focused on community problems or to solve. Okay, they conduct problem to solve the community problems. Okay, that is for the uh, uh, that is for directed patrol. And we have here also the so-called interactive patrol. So an, a strategy, uh, it is similar. Okay, it has similarity or it's similar to directed patrol. So parehas, it is directed to the uh, common problem or the let's say the uh, determined uh, problem in the community pero ang pinagkaiba niya lang dyan it put emphasis on police citizen interaction okay so with that um, parang combination or parang na mas na enhance or nadagdagan pa okay yung purpose nila so not only in dealing with uh, police I mean uh, in dealing with the community problem that was determined but also, okay, it put emphasis on police citizen interaction or yung tinatawag natin na police community relation, okay, or building a uh, good rapport with the citizens, okay, or with the community, okay, and then input is sought in resolving patrol problems, okay, so it also includes dito, uh, it also involves in interactive patrol it might also includes the participation of the citizen in solving the problems. Okay, especially the barangay. Okay, so that is for the, uh, that is for interactive patrol. And not only the barangay, pero pinaka main din talaga, pinaka importante, is yung mga residents din. Okay, so hindi lahat, sa lahat ng pagkakataon, barangay ang nakakaalam. Minsan, merong alam ang res residents na hindi alam ng barangay na nangyayari. So, it's very important also to create interaction with them. Okay, so that is the difference between directed and interactive patrol. And then we have here now another strategy, the so-called community-oriented policy. So, it says in here under community-oriented policy, individual beat officers become okay, the vocal point, focal point in identifying problems peculiar to his or her beat and in developing solutions. So it is giving the responsibility, okay? The individual beat officer or yung assigned na police officer talaga dun sa area, okay? The responsibility is given to him, okay? Or siya yung mananagot kung ano yung nangyayari dun sa area or area assigned to him, okay? Dun sa beat assigned to him, okay? And then stresses the it stresses the accountability of the individual patrol officer. So it seeks na yung patrol officer with that bearing uh, bearing in his mind na responsibility niya yung assigned bit niya kung ano yung nangyari na. Then with that it might uh, or can develop or it could be act as a uh, pressure maybe. Okay? Or it could seeks to develop the uh, I mean uh, in the patrol officer a greater sense. Okay? of commitment to duties and responsibilities. So, ikaw, na-assign ka sa area na, do, na yun, gugustuhin mo ba na may mangyayari doon? Since alam mo naman sa sarili mo na kapag ikaw, may nangyari sa lugar mo, hindi maganda yung nangyari sa assigned beat mo, okay? With that, ikaw yung mananagot, kasalanan, parang ikaw yung masisisi kung bakit nangyayari yung ganun doon sa area. So, with that, parang merong pressure or may encourage ka na develop sa ulo mo may inculcate sa ulo mo, sa isipan mo, na dapat gawin mo yung uh, kaya, uh, kaya mo in order to uh, avoid those circumstances na merong mangyari dun sa area mo. So that is 
that is being uh, emphasized here in community oriented policy okay and then with uh, with that we have here also the decoy patron okay so usually it is uh, a principal tactics which are blending i mean uh, that are blending okay and decoy in which patrol personnel are deployed in specific high crime areas in discrete disguises so usually use of unmarked vehicles okay in an effort to blend in their uh, into their surroundings in the expectation of observing crime in progress uh, just like also in the sila in uniform so purpose of this decoy patrol is more on arrest or crime apprehension criminal criminal apprehension and the next one we have here the so-called aggressive patrol so it put, uh, i mean it puts emphasis on positive okay target oriented activities by the patrol officer okay so dito sa aggressive patrol okay it is uh, commonly as i mean uh, this is the assignment or deploying of those patrol officers dun sa uh, selected area okay anong selected area okay dun sa area na napakaraming napakaraming nangyayaring crime or napakataas yung crime rate. So doon nila uh, doon nila doon ide-deploy lahat, okay? Or halos uh, mas dadagdagan pa yung deployment doon or yung naka-deploy na mga police officers doon sa area na yun. So that is a form of aggressive patrol. So mas dadagdagan mo pa yung manpower basic doon sa yun sa so, area it's because it has a uh, it has a high risk Okay, or it has a high crime rate. So that could be uh, your basis or I mean uh, that could be uh, a way wherein you will be applying the so-called aggressive patrol strategy. Okay, so it, if it, it is effective, it is based on crime analysis which provides information concerning identifiable crime trends so, and activities. So intelligence is very important or crucial in here. Okay, and also... Uh, the so-called uh, crime analysis. So maybe the use of crime mapping is very important also in here. Okay? So, kung hindi accurate yung uh, analyzation mo, kung hindi accurate yung uh, records or data ninyo, okay, with your crime map or crime analysis uh, data ninyo, then with that, it could uh, not be, an, I mean, it could not be effective. Or it could not be, uh, we could not, uh, effectively okay uh, apply this so-called aggressive patrol okay kasi ma magkakamali magkakamali pala nagkamali pala kayo doon sa ano sa crime analysis ninyo doon sa area naman pala na yun hindi totoong maraming nangyayaring krimen doon so na waste natin yung resources natin eh uh, hindi naman uh, maganda yun di ba okay so marami kang dineploy doon eh, yun pala hindi accurate yung data so mistakes it i mean it 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 it, uh, it wasted okay your resources so, sayang lang yung effort sayang yung pagod and sayang yung resources so that is for aggressive and then we have here team pal uh, team policy so it says here this is the attempt okay this is an attempt to decentralize okay the police organization so, in order to make it more responsive to the localized needs and interest of neighborhood and community groups. So, nandito yung mga, merong mga karak characteristics, okay? Characteristics ng uh, team policy. So, number one is geographic stability of patrol through permanent assignment, okay? Of police teams and to small areas and neighborhoods. So, take note of this permanent assignment of police teams. So this is uh, to one uh, reason why is it uh, ina-apply or ginagamit din ito as strategy is ito nga. Uh, kapag permanente, nai-assign mo yung uh, member doon, okay? Or yung uh, police personnel doon sa area. Then mas merong advantage yan in a way na mas makaka-create siya ng good report. Or kapag naka-establish na siya ng good report within the community, then at least mas maganda na or mas madali na lang siyang makapag-solve ng problems just in case merong dumating na problema dun sa uh, area na yun or dun sa area of responsibility nila na yun. So, let's us, let us try to compare it kapag hindi permanent assignment. Sabihin natin, every month, palipat-lipat kung sino yung na-assign-assign dun sa uh, area na yun. So, do you think the personnel 
okay, or the police personnel can uh, better create a good report with the community. So, malamang hindi. Okay? Or, mas mafa-familiarize niya ba yung area or yung area of responsibility na na-assign sa kanya? So, malamang hindi. Unlike kapag i-permanent assignment mo yung police team stone or per, uh, police officer doon, then at least mas matagal siyang mag-stay doon, mas marami siyang makikilala, mas ma kakapisado niya yung lugar. So, that is one of the characteristics or good uh, characteristics of team policy. Aside from that, maximum communication, interaction, and coordination among team members, okay, fostered through the practice of working together to solve common problems. Okay? So, involved na dyan yung different unit ng PNP. Okay? Or different uh, offices ng PNP. So, nandyan na dapat Okay, communication between the regional office of the PNP, communication between the other municipal police station. So, no man is island kumbaga rin sa PNP. So, it's very important, especially in uh, solving cases na involve ang um, several places, okay, or it is committed in different places, or different municipalities. So, mas madadali yung apprehension ng certain person or detection ng... Uh, uh, criminals, okay? With that uh, coordination or interaction with the other team members or yung team members na tintukoy is syempre yung other police stations, other unit and others. Okay, and then we have here team, uh, another uh, characteristics is better communication and uh, interaction between team members and community. So that is also one characteristics of this team policy. Kaya nga ini-encourage nila permanent Okay, uh, permanent uh, deployment of that uh, certain police officer dun sa area para at least mas marami siyang makikilala, okay, dun sa community and then mas makakapi, mas makakapisado pa niya, okay, yung uh, area, okay, of responsibility niya, unlike sa papalit-palit na uh, destino, okay, so they can't be that as effective in that way. So, anyway, that is for the team policing strategy. Number four is different styles of management, okay? Supervision and decision-making, which emphasize, okay? Ito, involvement and participation of individual team members. So, hindi lang ang nagdi-decide dito is yung uh, head, okay? Or yung chief of police. So, hindi lang yon. So, dito sa team policing, there is the involvement and participation of individual team members or yung mga patrollers din. Okay? So, in making decisions which affect the operations of the team. Okay? So, there is there should be coordination or communication with the uh, team members, okay? From the patrol supervisor with the patrollers. And aside from that, coordination with other offices also involved. Okay? And then, uh, that is for the team policy strategy. Now, we have here the so-called integrated patrol system, or in other words, to say as the IPS. So, it is said to be an, it is a proactive crime prevention measure. Okay, it says here, having key components like patrol officers who are tasked to actions to prevent the occurrence of crime based on the crime clock and crime map. Okay, so one of the bases in here in applying this so-called uh, integrated patrol system is this one, crime clock and crime map. Okay, so simply the application of crime analysis again in here. So by the word integrated patrol, okay, integrated, nandyan na yung, uh, it involves several groups or it involves several units, okay? So we are going to have it here on our next slide kung ano ba, sino ba yung involved dito sa integrated patrol system na ito. So anyway, as to the purpose, it seeks to deter or engage the criminals, okay? before they undertake their various activities. So, thus, eliminating the elements of opportunity. So, more on preventive measure ang integrated patrol system. So, ensures also that deployment of patrollers are being done where they matter most. So, as we have shed, said a while ago, based on, on crime clock, okay? Kung kailan mas, I mean, uh, meron yung peak hours kung saan maraming nangyayaring krimen. So, that is being analyzed. And then, crime map. So, kung saang lugar mas maraming krimen ang nangyayari. So, this also being this is also being considered in this 
integrated patrol system. So with that, ayan na sabi dito, where they matter most. So i-deploy natin yung patrollers natin in a place kung saan mas kinakailangan. Okay? And then we have here, IP IPS ensures that efforts and resources of all security forces are present on the ground are being integrated and harnessed in the system. Okay? And uh, this one. Okay? The three components. Okay? The components of the integrated patrol system. So, meron tayo yung tinatawag na fixed components. So, ano yung tinatawag natin na fixed components? So, nandyan, it includes the police station, police community precincts. So, parang substations itong uh, police community precincts. Especially on those uh, area na masyadong malawak like Bar Bacoor or some uh, municipality. Sabihin natin, municipality of uh, municipality of uh, ano ba ang mga munisipyo ni dito? So, let's say we are city, here in the city of Bacor. So, it is composed of several precincts or it is uh, composed of different substations. So, hindi isa lang yung police station nila. So, napakarami. Or in other words, in some municipalities, they call those substations as police community precincts okay? or PCP. Kaya, in some places, meron yung tinatawag nila na PCP1, PCP2, PCP3, okay? or meron yung police station 1, police station 2, station 3, mga ganun. So, that is uh, that is because of this so-called integrated patrol system. Okay? And then, fixed components. Okay? So, aside from merong PCP uh, precincts, so, uh, merong main police station, merong main police station, merong uh, PCP or substations, meron ding traffic post. Okay? So, that is purposely for those assigned in traffic. Okay, and then tourist protection units, meron din dapat yan. Aside from that, we have here also the field offices of the national support units. And then we have here also the regional public safety battalions and public uh, provincial public safety committee. So, I mean company and uh, company headquarters. Okay, and then forward bases, headquarters and detachments are friendly forces and allied units involved in the security and in the maintenance of peace. Okay, so with that, those are considered as fixed components, yung mga yun, yung mga police stations natin, and others. Aside from that, the second component is the so-called patrol components. So, syempre, ito yung mga na-assign sa foot patrol, mobile, water, waterborne, airborne, mounted, and other kinds of patrol being done by the police and other security forces. So, anyway, this so-called mounted patrol is also known as the horse patrol. Okay? Horse patrol it is commonly used also on those areas na hindi applicable ang bike, hindi applicable ang hindi applicable ang mobile. Okay? Or automobile. Hindi applicable ang motorcycle. So, just like sa mga beaches, sa mga parks, Mounted patrol is also applicable or sometimes it can be used also for crowd control. Okay, and uh, uh, with that, those are considered as under, under patrol components of the IPS. Okay, and then the, aside from that, we have here the auxiliary components. So by the word integrated na sinabi ko kanina, it composed of several groups. So nandyan na, papasok na dito yung BPATs natin. Okay, or in other words, the Barangay Tanots or the Barangay Peacekeeping Action Team. Okay, and then nandyan din public safety offices of the LGUs, private security agencies, and non-government organizations and other force multipliers. Okay, so those are some of the, I mean, those are the three components of the IPS. So please take note of those. So as to show you the diagram of it, how does the, the IPS works? So, nandito. Okay. So, it is composed of the three. So, nandyan yung fixed components. So, they should maintain. Okay. This arrow maintain or this arrow represents the coordination between these three components. Okay. That could, I mean, uh, that is for, uh, that is in the conduct of the patrol operations or to maintain or to make sure, as it said a while ago, to ensure that uh, it is being utilized well. Okay, the resources is being utilized well. So that is for effective patrol operations. So this is the so-called integrated patrol system.
police visibility of the PNP. And then we have here the Tactical Operations Center. So what is the role of the Tactical Operations Center? So this is co this is very important or they have crucial role in information dissemination between the uh, team members or the team. Okay, uh, between the patrol supervisor, the main station, okay, between the uh, other force multipliers. So, nandyan yung tactical operation center which serve as the nerve center, okay, or parang connectors, okay, just like sa nerve functioning or ng ating body, di ba? It is composed of several nerves that serve signals on what should be made or what should be performed by the organs or what I mean, uh, by other by the other parts of the body, okay? So, in order for all components to be fully integrated, take note, 24-7. So, it should be available 24-7 because they have the crucial rule. So, they link the police station and its various units and patrol officers, as I've said a while ago. So, it's from uh, provincial, city, district, and other auxiliary components. So, that is the role of the Tactical Operations Center or the TOC. And then another one, uh, PNP personnel manning the te uh, tactical operation center should maintain okay, this so-called communication log. So, isulat niya lahat ng nareceive na tawag niya, okay, the time, okay, and the contents of the conversation on all calls. So, that is purposely uh, in times of that could be used in investigation, that could be also used for future reference in the conduct of investigation. So, that is very important. That should be considered by the Tactical Operations Center operator. And it enables also the Chief of Police and the Patrol Supervisors to keep track on the situation okay, in the various patrol beats and sector sectors as often as needed. So, at least they are also be informed, I mean, keep informed by the Tactical Operations Center. And take note that communication system between, okay, between... Uh, between and among police stations with the police provincial okay, office and then the city police office and police districts is vital. Okay? It's very important. So without coordination with that offices, maybe uh, you will uh, not be able to solve problems uh, or maybe in times of uh, criminal apprehension, you will not be effectively or you cannot be effectively or you cannot be able to easily apprehend criminals so this is very vital this is vital especially in the so-called drug net operations so especially in times na merong fleeing suspects okay from crime scene okay so this is drug this is uh that is considered as a drug net operation so with that uh, in order i mean uh Without coordination, sabihin natin, lalagpas sa boundary, okay? Sa area of jurisdiction nyo. So, lumagpas siya doon. So, you need to call or you need to coordinate it with the other stations, okay? So, that is how crucial the communication system, okay, between those offices is uh, needed, okay? So, this is, uh, I mean, uh, by showing this diagram or by having this diagram, you can see on it that we have here the police provincial office or the city provincial office they should coordinate it, or these arrows shows or emphasize the coordination between the adjacent police uh, provincial offices or yung mga kalapit barangay or i mean kal kalapit probinsya nila okay and not only with that offices and other it should be with the other pol uh, law enforcement offices just like na lang bfp okay just like P uh, pedea and others and of course, these arrows also shows coordination with this ones, lower police stations. Okay? So, ganun yun. Okay? And uh, this also, they should also be coordinated with these stations or other police stations. So, that is how crucial communication system and the PNP is important.